All right, hello, best listeners in the world. And why I say the best is because I just love my, you know, people that are listening to this podcast. This is the newest episode of the Corporate Happiness Show. I'm your host, Jacqueline. And I am just super excited for this episode because it's a little different. We're not necessarily having an HR specialist today but we're having an energy specialist and you know i feel like two peas in a pot because i'm all about energy too with my work and uh, danielle we met through the girl bosses of saint pete it's an entrepreneurial women's group and then also through a workshop so welcome danielle i really am so excited that you said yes to be on the show oh thank you so much for having me i'm thrilled to be having this conversation with you today I know, me too, because we're, we're going to all energy out here. Oh, yeah. Of course, we're going to keep it for corporate happiness and all that. So, but tell me something a little bit about human design, because I took your workshop and I was so mm-hmm. giddy to take that workshop because I know it's energetic based and so much wisdom in it. So tell us a little bit more about human design. Is that okay if we start there? Yeah, let's just dive right in. I know. See, that's, <laughs> let's do it. Yes. So what I love about human design is it's science-based, but it's also, it's who we were created to be before conditioning happened, before we were told who we should be, how we should do this, what what will, what should make us happy, blah, 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 before we were told all these quote rules. Blah, blah, blah. I like it. Exactly. (laughs) Before we're told all these rules for our life, what we should do and what that will bring us, this is if we follow this particular essence, what this is our energetic blueprint, then we will be able to have the path of least resistance in whatever area that we desire. So happiness, fulfillment, ease, flow, whether it's in our businesses, our careers, our relationships, our health, our spirituality. And that's the essence of you and nobody has the exact same human design. That's what's so amazing. And that's why I actually got into human design because when I was in corporate, I trained on all the different tests, right? All the personality tests, lead and strengths finders, all of these things, which were all really cool because I'm, I'm like a people detective and I love understanding who people are at their core. But what got me so into human design, it was kind of like the missing link. It doesn't just give you a box to put yourself in that gives you some qualities, right? It's like exactly who you be at every piece of you. So knowing how to leverage that energetically and just scientifically, how you thrive best. It's like the keys to the kingdom. I know. I love it. And the thing is, it's like, it gives you this roadmap, like you say, like Mm -hmm. you say blueprint. However, it's still up to you and your flexibility and whatnot to actually then be you to put that into place. So it's not like telling you, oh, always go left, always go Right. right. You still have to take a responsibility and saying, I want to show up as the highest self. And Mm -hmm. with that blueprint, I'm going to take that as a a guide and a roadmap. And I'm going to show up every day and do my thing so I can actually be the best me, which, you know, leads into this podcast, why this even exists, you know, because Mm -hmm. we're going through a huge shift and I see this not as a hard shift, it's more like an invitation to Mm -hmm. actually be ourselves in much higher ways. And that brings me to alignment. And I know pre podcast, we kind of talked a little bit alignment, what that even means, you know? So what do you think about alignment? Because that's boils down to that, no? Yeah, I think, you know, in general terms, alignment is the keys to the kingdom, really. But alignment looks different for everyone. That's what's so cool about it. It's subjective, right? Alignment is ultimately what feels like it is working for the highest level good, for the path of least resistance in whatever way you want to, whatever domain of life you want to put that into, right? It's like when things just click and it just happens. It's just, it's easeful. There's not resistance. There's not closed doors. It's like, I feel when I like visualize alignment, I look at like going down a hall and all the doors are open. Yes. Right? And then I get to the destination. I'm just walking straight through all the way to the end. All the doors are open, no issues. And now I'm on the other side, exactly where I want to be. Shortcutting the time. I'm just there. 
Yeah, and alignment also means like, hey, some doors just need to be closed. So, totally, you know what exactly. I mean? You walk by, you don't even need to close it. You can just walk by and say, okay, that's not my door. I'm going to stay wow. aligned with uh, who I am, with your hu human design, with what feels right for me and whatnot. So yes. how do you think with what we're already talking about? I love it. We're like nitty gritty in it already. How do you think that helps leaders and then, of course, their companies in you know making sure that uh, there is actually a good work culture there is happiness there and people are really wanting to stay it's also a healthy environment because i know your background i wrote it down here is a, a medical executive so you know mm -hmm. you're coming yeah. from the corporate world so you know yeah. so how do you think it helps you know leaders and companies with that whole alignment thing yeah. You know, as leaders, we're responsible for so many things. A, we're responsible that everybody knows what they're doing and how to do it and that they're equipped <laughs> with whatever they need to do it to the best of their ability, right? So that also goes all into the culture, right? The relationships. Relationships are everything, right? And I think any leader out there would understand if you're creating a beautiful synergistic relationship amongst your team, everything is going to be heightened. Productivity is going to be heightened. Workplace happiness is going to be heightened, right? Oh, so yeah. Under understanding if we're going to understand what that alignment looks like we have to understand every individual at their core right what how do they thrive best how do they manage their energy best who do they best work with what are their inherent strengths what are their weaknesses maybe they shouldn't be doing this particular aspect of the role because it's it's decreasing productivity whether that productivity is actual tangible or their own emotional productivity right if people are emotionally drained they're not going to show up and give their best so human design goes into really understanding and pinpointing who someone is at their core. How do they thrive best in their strengths? When we can look at that as a whole and then the strengths of a team and leverage and have a level of respect and mutual understanding of who's thriving in what position so we know who to defer to and trust in those positions, the level of respect, autonomy, and just genuine like gratitude increases all around. I know it's like amazing and like everything you say it's just like my heart is like smiling you know and because I mean a company in itself is not just an empty thing either there is a pumping energy in it but I do believe that it comes from the top you know what are the mm -hmm. values what what are you setting who are you as a leader how are yeah. you showing up as a leader and how are you enabling them through that really your company to thrive right totally Absolutely. And that's a big thing. As leaders, we cannot effectively lead if we don't know ourselves, right? We have to first understand, exactly. deeply understand and master us so we can master our mission and who else we're helping. And we can probably all relate to, like, we've probably been at some point in our life under the leadership of someone who was maybe really chaotic, who didn't know who they were, who maybe had no emotional regulation, maybe wasn't really a great leader, right? And how that affected everything versus one who did have that level of awareness and how everyone everyone else in the team thrived as a result of that, right? So this is really what that's about. It's about energetic self-mastery. And we can truly master who we are at our core and evolve outward. Not to say that mastery is an end-all be-all because it's a continual progress. We're always evolving. It's always changing, can, yes. Totally, but if we can truly know ourselves, that's where alignment comes in. Because we will know, okay, is this decision that I'm making, is the way that I'm acting, is the way that I'm being, the way that I'm thinking, is this all as a direct reflection of me and my highest level self? And am yes. I operating at the highest? When you are, everything else, your team, your life professionally and personally will line up in accordance to that. Yeah, exactly. What I just wanted to think about on, and what just came like out of it is like, it's a it's a combination you know it, it's not just separate like how you show up as a leader in a company right it really comes from personal and then in the company it's it's all one i feel like back in time it was like you know go to work but leave everything outside of the door you know right. what i'm saying yeah. you're standing at the door to go to work and you leave everything out so you come kind of like as an empty shell and that made it separate but the invitation for this shift is really right now is actually to not be separate anymore. Right, 
to not yeah. be separate anymore. You are you, and then you mm -hmm. figure out your highest self, and that's how you walk through life. And sometimes you're at work, and sometimes you're home. Sure, at home you have pajama pants on, and at work you have <laughs> a different clothing on, proper clothing, but ultimately who you are is not changing right. depending on where you are. You're doing life, and in life you work, and you're private, and that under the house, under the roof of being your highest self, right? Totally. And I think that's what makes us even more dynamic leaders when we can just come in any situation in our allness, in our totality, right? Being our most authentic expressed selves. It gives others a chance to learn even more from us and for us to affect the whole of wherever we are even more deeply because we're bringing every piece of us, not just one little 10% segment of who we are to any given situation. Absolutely. And that also highlights that when you're that open and that dynamic, that conscious as a person and showing up as such as a leader, it means that you're also going to look at your company and your people differently because you're going to be excited for them to change too. You know, totally. whereas you're holding on to how it has to be and how it's always been and all that stuff. And it's yeah. kind of like hunkering down. You might want to expand, you know, have the business expand in income and whatnot and maybe in size, but you're not really okay with having your people evolve. And I think when you learn that you're evolving, you're ever changing, you're your highest self and oh, today it's this, tomorrow it's that. And then you're coming into the company, you're like, wait a minute, the company is a living organism too and my people are too mm -hmm. meaning that you're actually okay to have everything constantly change and evolve mm -hmm. and calibrate and expand and however you want to call this and that to me is really true success for a business yeah. and that's isn't that what the shift is all about i fully agree yeah a hundred percent because i think we're, we're living in and moving into this new paradigm right even in corporate like things are not as they used to be we're no. seeing you know you know positions opening up skyrocketing especially for women you know in the corporate spaces as well in leadership roles and taking more of a conscious approach to what are people like actually listening to what everyone wants what does the team actually want right and it's not like free pizza fridays and this that mm. and the other right things that used to just be like quote unquote protocol of oh this is how we you know respect our employees this is how we show them that we care we're always like really irrelevant actually right now we're coming into consciousness or we're asking okay but what how what does make someone thrive what do they actually want how would this person this person feel appreciated versus this person right and really looking at the whole of the person the whole of the company the whole of the mission because it's all yes. interconnected yeah i love that and think about it this way if it would be like uh you hire people in the sense of do do your wishes and dreams mm -hmm. do your values does your highest self that constant evolving does that fit the company when right. you look at it that way it's like okay do you want to be your highest self well we want to be our highest self and i get tell you what does that fit in a you know in a whole world mission does that fit and suddenly it's like wow i mean doing business in these times is exciting i'm yes. excited for <laughs> what's out there and what's possible don't you think that the possibilities are just endless we're like yeah. this is an amazing stepping stone no absolutely you know when we get out of the box of just you know okay here's the glass ceiling when we just get rid of the ceiling yeah, and we can just realize truly anything is possible, not only just for the whole of the company, but for each individual as a part of it, right? The company's not going to be what it is without the individuals in it. So let's foster their growth. Let's foster their evolution. That's where we're really going to see companies thrive and have long-term sustainability with their, with their um, staff as well. I know, I know. And you know, when you just said that about the ceiling and whatnot, this vision came in, it's like, the company is actually creating the ceiling. Right. And what would happen if we would look at the company like a balloon and we're just going to keep pumping in air to make it bigger, 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 mm. bigger. If there is yes. no problem in the company being kind of like, 
you know, creating a space because that is great. But in that space, what if we would make the space bigger, pump air in that balloon, you know, and get bigger, bigger, bigger. And that means the ceiling is further out. And guess what the people will do? They're going to go like, oh, wow, this is such a big space. Yes. And the ceiling right now, it's a lot of people are hunkered down, right? There's all, yeah. that there's only so much I can do and I can't get through the top and all that stuff. But if we kind of like help you know the leaders it's really the leadership that creates yes. this company to say okay you know what we're gonna make this big we're gonna make yes. this big we're gonna be give the people space to grow and then the people will say wait a minute that there is no ceiling i'm just gonna grow mm -hmm. and if it's a fit these people will be so happy because everyone yes. wants to have the best day ever everyone ha wants yeah. to do meaningful stuff everyone wants to be valued right like you right. said free pizza is not it anymore but valued right. <laughs> and and being said hey you can grow you can grow you yeah. find your highest potential every single minute and yeah. you can grow and shift yeah. and whatnot and i just that that visual just feels so good you just make the company big but it starts with the leadership understanding that right. really it starts with them yes to 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 raise that as well so how do you think is that best done i mean how can you you know with the leaders and then the leaders bringing such a bigness and grandness into and a new way of doing business kind of and, and it's also like a little bit of bold type of vision right how yeah. do you think we can help the leaders to go for it you know i think the new paradigm of business is conscious leadership and right. bringing this back into you know human design and gene keys this is why i do what i do right helping companies uncover what does your literal genetic coding say what does your actual energetic blueprint say about this what is someone's absolute gifting that they probably don't even realize they have because no one's explored it with them and how can we use that in the company if you're looking at every single person as this gem that's going to add to yes. the greatness, then you wanna pull out the gems. You don't wanna stifle them. You don't wanna have, you know, Amy over here, for example, just <laughs> doing this one task when really, if, she, if you let her get into her gifting, she could blow the company away with the amount of brilliance yeah. that could come out of her, right? So what if, wow, what are the possibilities of companies that actually let everyone shine and flourish? And not just that, but extracted the gold from who they are and and put funding behind it to let them do what they needed to do. Not only are they gonna be more fulfilled in general as people, but the companies are going to, this would be a completely new, new era of business. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Everyone gets to, everyone gets to thrive. Everyone gets to have what they want in that situation, right? It's like, you think you're a successful company now. Imagine how much more successful you could be if you're letting the gems yeah. of your people, just if their individual brilliance shine and flourish, that's going to change everything. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of funny because we're talking about, so, you know, what do the executives need, the leadership? What do the managers need? What do the people need? And how can we create more happiness? What else? And actually, when you actually do business in this energetic, explosive, wonderful, conscious, yeah. limitless way, you don't even have to go figure out how can we create more happiness? You can, right. you don't have to because exactly. the plateau that you're actually creating as such is already happiness. It's fulfillment, it's happiness, it's health, it's success. It's like, how do we make more money? Well, it's all there. It's all there exactly. because ultimately it's still a law of attraction, universal state. You know, it's all built on energy. It's all built on what, who am I? What frequency am I in? And yeah. well, what am I attracting in that? So do you agree with that? I do. I think like the happiness, the fulfillment, the, all of that is just a byproduct, right? If you're on the right path, meaning you're allowing everyone's brilliance to shine, you're, you're getting into the gold of who they be. What is the gold in their blueprint, right? How can yeah. we extract that so everyone gets to benefit from that, right? Yeah, totally different pair. Of course, the byproduct is going to be <laughs> happiness and fulfillment and even more impact because you're coming from all of you. You're coming from a full cup rather than depletion and burnout from hustle culture and doing things that aren't actually in alignment for you. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, it's like, I mean, like the happiness, it's like, 
in a situation or in a, in a environment of a company that's really consciously leading to the highest potential that we're talking about, you would then say, you know, sure, there will be problems. <laughs> sure, there will be unhappy days, whatever. Sure. But it would be not on an already depleted surface, right. you know, and then right. taking the whole thing down and say, oh, I have to quit. It will right. come from, well, you know what? This is exciting because we're having a new problem. Yes, and we're going to yes. go for it. We're going to take it as a stepping stone and we're building on that. Or if somebody comes in the company and says, hey, I'm having a real hard time. You know, we have illness or somebody, you know, we have a loss in the family, something really emotional. It would come from, well, this is life. It happens like that, but it would be in a supported way. It wouldn't be in mm -hmm. a, I can't handle this anymore. I can't exactly. take it anymore. It would actually be like, well, this is really hard. And you know what? You take off or you do this. But as a company culture, we are totally able to manage that and support you. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah, I say, you know, the word that comes through with this, we're getting a little spiritual here, but it's energetic minimums, right? The energetic minimums are rising, meaning what, what was our regular before that we like were just dealt with now? That's not good enough anymore, right? Yeah. The energetic minimums of what people are requiring to stay at a company long term, to remain loyal to them, to want to keep being there, the minimum is raising, right? That bar is raised. So how can we continue to raise that bar to where the energetic minimum is everyone is at their highest potential, right? And if we're extracting the gold, right, if we're coming into their blueprint and looking at what that is, then that, that's going to constantly be raising, which means everybody gets to benefit from that. Yeah, because we're all connected. Yeah. So if I go higher, you go higher. If you go higher, yeah. I go higher. And then exactly. the company goes higher. And out of that, all these inspirational, creative ideas come out yes. and suddenly it, there's just no more question about anything really. So yes. yeah. Oh, wow. I just, gosh, I love this conversation. This is just so, so cool. So you've also written a few books and best-selling books. And as a fellow author and best-selling author too, it's just, oh, wow. I mean, do you like writing books? I love it. It's one of my favorite things, right? If I can get to the point eventually where that's all I can do, I'm here for it, right? I love it, love it, love it so much. It's just, you know, I, I grew up, of course, you know, reading a lot of books. I learned so much, you know, I've been an avid reader and I'm thinking my, I have the mindset of if someone can share in a book, however many pages, 200 something pages, right? The keys to what you need to know in a particular area that can completely change your life. Why would you not read it? Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's like, and if you have wisdom that you can share, that's not in a book already, and it's not there, it is your job to write it. Absolutely. Right? It's your gift to do that and to share and share from your experience or share from concepts that you integrated from other people that then changed your life, right? There's so many things you could talk about or write about or read about, but wow, what a gift, right? What a gift that people are putting their knowledge in one little beautiful book for you right. that can yeah. completely transform your reality should you choose to take it that seriously. I love it. I love it. And you know, when you've written a book, right? When it comes in the mail, it's like, oh, yes. it's the best feeling ever. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's it like, is. wow, it's like my baby has arrived. Yeah, yes. no, I feel the same. I really, really do feel the same. Actually, I have a children's book this week coming out and I'm just yes, so excited. Congratulations. I'm really excited. Dear to my heart, really dear to my heart. So is there any book in the works right now for you? There is, yep, okay. there is. We have we have several mapped out, um, ready to go over the next few years. We're basically just gonna roll them out one after the other. So I've taken a two year break from when my last two came out um, and just not really break, I've still been writing, but in terms of I haven't published anything else yet, but we're now easing back into that time where let's do it. Let's, let's do it early 2023. That's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, like, that, like, it's just when I took your human design workshop, it was just like you as a speaker, you as a coach, you as a leading expert in, you know, how to consciously live and all this good, juicy stuff. I just really enjoyed you because I knew right then that, yeah, you're the real deal. Definitely. And um, because we're you know, very fellow <laughs> energetic people. 
um, it was really wonderful to talk with you. Also, we did a session then afterwards to talk with you about the deepness of your work mm -hmm. and uh, because support, everyone can use support. And that's why leadership sometimes, right? Things like, oh no, I, you know, I'm a leader and I'm, yeah. no, support is really, really important. So I, I just value your expertise a lot, like Thank very, you. very much. So question. So you do also um, other things, right? You, you, help leaders as a, an advisor, for instance, you mm -hmm. go hold workshops, you do retreats yeah. and you, do you want to share anything else? What else you're doing and we're not touch basing on it? Sure. Yes. You know, I think that this is, this is kind of hitting home on the point, right? When you're just, when you're leading from your allness, right? When you're bringing everything to the table, there's a lot of things you can do and a lot of different ways you can help people, right? So I love my work as a spiritual advisor to conscious companies and business owners, really helping them see the things they can't see, pulling in their human design and their gene keys, helping the team, the whole company operate more efficiently to help the rise of humanity, all of that goodness, all the dynamics at play there. Um, and then of course, doing retreats in person as well as virtual um, things as, you know, something as super minute as a particular issue they might be having or something as large as just opening up to energetics, right? What does this yes. even look like, right? It can be as big or as detailed as, as we want. Um, and then of course, you know, long-term commitments, working with people over time to help them integrate, right? How do we, okay, now that we know what my energetic blueprint is, now that we know my human design, we know my gene keys, we know my light, my shadow, my gift, we know the keys to the kingdom. Now I just need some help actually implementing it, right? Knowing it versus actually deconditioning and putting it into action are two very different things, right? Yes. So I love that long-term work as well. Some of my clients I've already worked with for four plus years now um, ongoing because it's an evolution. Right. The more you discover and master about this particular area of your life, all these other areas open up as well. Right. And it just gets to be this beautiful, constant exploration. Yeah. And it's never done because you never don't done. want it to be done. You don't want right. it to be done. You're here to constantly go, go, go. And it's like sometimes when I work with clients, it's like <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a opening a can of worms, right? It's more and more and more. I said, exactly that. But that's that evolution. That acts, yeah. That's that expansion and calibration. You want to find the fun in the constant movement, the constant newness, the constant change, the constant everything yeah. you, you don't want it. We have kind of like sometimes in life, you know, I think that's how we grew up, you know, that you kind of want it, wanting to kind of design a life that stays the same, you know, and this safety mm -hmm. and security mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I really think that this shift, this is, it's this invitation and no, actually the natural flow of life and yourself and energetics and everything is movement, constant yes. movement, new. So find the joy in that and the safety and security in that, because that's what the flow and how, how it's supposed to be yes. versus holding on to something. And usually what I find, I don't know if you find the same, but usually when people hold on, like clients hold on or leaders hold on to a company that that's supposed to be that way and stay that way. It's usually because they haven't done the inner work, you know, because right. if they trust and they open their hearts and they find kind of like that alignment with the flow, they're like, oh yes, let's do yes. it. Do you see that too? Absolutely. And I think it comes down as well to kind of a scarcity versus abundance mindset of things, right? Yes. I think um, the scarcity piece is, oh, we have to just say just like this because, oh, we've <laughs> got to optimize it perfect. We don't need to change a single thing yeah. or else yeah. everything's going to fall apart, right? Yeah. But it's fear based, right? It's fear that if something changes, then everything is going to fall apart rather than this abundant mindset that says, oh, things are really optimized. How can we get even better? How can we Absolutely. do even better, right? And it's that that energy of expansion. It's like, oh, we want to constantly expand and, and evolve and grow. And that's what gets to be so beautiful, right? And then when we have a blueprint of what is that next level and we get to do that inner work and we get to feel into our own energetic minimums and maximums of what our next level, you know, it, you know, level is in our, in our, in our lives and our businesses are everything. Wow. That gets to be exciting. Wow. That gets to be fulfilling. very exciting, right? very exciting. Because you see everything is happening for you rather than to you. And it just changes the game. It does. It really does. And, you know, I think one of the big understandings is like where I think it helps people and companies and everyone really to understand that there's the physical life level and there's the energetic 
you know yes. and it's not level in the how one is higher than the other but you're a complete wholesome being you're not mm -hmm. just this physical body or this physical life your company is not just physical there is right. an energetic yes. there's an energetic essence there's wisdom in yes. there information and in the energetics it's limitless totally physically it's very limited and so when you bring both together wow so i mean you're experiencing on a physical life level with this limitlessness that's possible you know no ceiling yes. versus you're only on a physical life level and then you're hunkering down in these limits that's where fear and all that stuff is based and if you just live in the energetics, well, then you're kind of missing out on life. So I'm a right. lot of times yes. just in energetics and then I have to remind myself, hey, you're also physical too, right? Really? And I think that's probably for you the same when you work with that. Yes. But what would you tell to somebody, um, leaders, businesses, whatnot, how to kind of bring this all together? Because that's like, it's a little bit abstract and it's, Mm -hmm. sometimes hard to kind of grasp how would you say you know to get a little bit the hang of it to start doing life like that yeah when i think of this i think of polarity is the first word that comes to mind right so we have light we have darkness right we wake up and we go to sleep right we have masculine we have feminine we have structure we have flow so we have the practical, we have the spiritual, right? And that's what all of this is. So when we can understand it really is polarity, how do we get to harmonize the polarity? That's where everything gets to be great, right? How do we get to use science and literally look at our blueprint and see, ah, great, here's a roadmap. Yes. And come into the essence of who we are energetically and say, ooh, but how do I wanna make this my own, right? That's the more abstract piece. Or how does this fit into the totality of the company? Then we really get to make it our own and that's the flow piece, right? So we need structure and flow. And they're just, it just works better when you have both, right? Yeah. If you have one or the other, more than likely something's yeah. off, someone's unhappy, something isn't working well, right? But when we can have both, it's like, well, why the heck would we not? Why would we yeah. not choose for everything to be optimized? Right? Yeah, because a wholesome way of experiencing everything, that juicy way of living, that vivid way, the really awake way is really when it's both. So, yeah, yeah I like how you say that with polarities. That's really, really good. So how do you keep yourself <laughs> balanced and not, you know, polarity one to the other? What do you do, you know, privately and personally to keep yourself happy at work and just in life? Oh man, all kinds of stuff, which is, which is what is so cool about your blueprint because different things light you up on different days, right? So there are days I always, I, I really feel like I have a strong balance now between um, like learning, right? So furthering my knowledge and things of this nature and playing, right? And actually having fun doing something that's quote frivolous just because it's fun, just because it lights me up, just because it fills my cup. Right? Yeah. And I think before, especially when I was in the corporate world, and I see a lot of my corporate clients with this as well, is they're very much, they're all about, you know, let me, let me better myself for my career. So they'll be learning, they'll go to symposiums, they'll take a class, they'll get a certification, but yet their actual personal life is depleted. Their energy is actually drained because there's no play. There's no pleasure. We're not filling our cup up, right? So for me personally, it's very much of, I will always be learning. I'm always studying something. And then I'll you know go to the beach or I'll do some sort of water sports or I'll go for a walk in nature with my dogs or meditation, um, some sort of creative outlet. I, I recently got into painting, um, meditative painting, which is really cool. And just letting that energy come through in that way. Not because I want to be a painter or sell this art, just because it's therapeutic, right? So without yeah. the expectation to the outcome, right? And that might look different for everyone. Right? And it I does like look different that. for everyone. Yeah. And it I does. think that piece too, like for me, it was very much like, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to do the same thing every day. And I think a lot of people, especially a lot of high achievers, feel the same way. If you feel like you have to do something to recoup your energy, then you don't want to do it. But if it gets to be something that gets to come out of you just based on a desire, then great. So I like to have like my arsenal, so to speak, of things that I love to do, right? What helps me rejuvenate and come back into my own? And then I'll just feel into what feels out of this, you know, list of 20 things, what feels like the most exciting thing for me today? 
right? And yeah. it doesn't always have to be the same thing, right? I think especially with morning routines, people are always like, oh, meditate for 20 minutes, journal for 10 minutes, do this, this, this. Yeah. Well, you might get bored of that, right? And then you if sit you're there like, and you're like, hmm, what do I journal about? I don't know. And then you right. feel bad about it. And then you yeah. go down that spiral and then the whole thing that you started, you know, as do helping yourself does not help. Yeah. 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 Especially if, you know, there's someone like you as a manifesting generator, like this might look different each day, what you want to do. Yeah. Right. So just letting yourself know, okay, this is going to be a non-negotiable. I'm going to have non-negotiable time today to fill my cup. Whatever that feels like is what I'll do. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And like I shared with you before we started to record, it's like, for me, it's like a bike ride in the morning. Yeah. However, it's funny if you think about it, that's most mornings the same. However, the ride is always different. You know, it's like Ooh, I see birds, yeah. see different people, the weather is changing and different. And then, you know, the dolphins, whatnot, but it's this, just whatever you like and understand that today, right now, this is really what's helpful tomorrow it's something different and that's once again the flow of life it's like yes. it's not supposed to be always the same right. and you will also see it like if you think about it like you you do the same thing like you start working out and then you start like okay i have to I have to I have to you suddenly realize it's actually not helping your body anymore right you know in the yeah. beginning it helped and then suddenly your body starts aching or inflaming whatnot and then a lot of times it's like we're like oh the food oh this or that but actually it's an it's a it's a perception inside the energy mm -hmm. you're creating mm -hmm. i have to i have to it's a very inflammatory yes. you know energy that you're creating so to rather just say well what do i need happiness always looks a little mm -hmm. bit different because ultimately you're an energetic wholesome being you know and yeah. you're supposed to be with the flow of life because that's really why you're here so to yeah. keep that joy rolling <laughs> right yes yeah the so most would you to replenish yes yes does, yeah. i say yeah absolutely so would you say that if a leader shows that they're living in these ways in these juicy ways that we're kind of talking about would you say that helps the people look at this and say you know what i feel comfortable in doing that because the leadership is doing that what do you think that role is when the leaders show up like that what's the change it's everything, right? Leaders, great leaders lead by example, not through what they're telling other people to do, right? So if the leader is leading through this example of optimization, of brilliance, of, of, of bringing your totality to this, it shows others, oh, wow, this is possible because I'm seeing the changes. I'm seeing the effects. They're not just telling me something, yes, right? Yes. And people, we're, we're energetic beings. We feel when something is real and true and genuine, and we feel when something's totally BS, right? We know we might not be able to pinpoint exactly what it was or exactly what it is, but we feel because we're energetic beings. So when yes. we see and feel the energy of our leadership being embodied in what is true for them, we feel it's possible for us too. Yeah, yeah, it's everything really. So leaders, take the leap. Yes. <laughs> Listen to us and take the leap. You, you got this and you can change everything around really. So we are actually at the end of our conversation. Oh my gosh, I could just keep talking. We, we might need to do this again and then just go even yeah. deeper into, into these talks and whatnot. So where can people find you? Thank you. You can find me at my website, which is www.danielle-laura.com. You can also find me on Instagram at underscore Danielle Laura underscore. Excellent. Yeah, I, I tell you what, anyone that's listening, please just touch base with Danielle. And I can personally say that I'm in this field and yeah, you're absolutely an expert. I, I, I don't really trust so many people like usually to work yeah. with my energy or whatnot because I just, you know, I get it. I, yeah. Right. It's like you're very picky, you know, and it's like the, the dentist doesn't go to every dentist, you know, right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I absolutely can vouch for you. And I know that you're just an expert in the field. And you also, you're really big hearted. And I really like that about you. So thank you so much. Anyway, so thank you so much for being on the show. I'm just so happy that you said yes to being here. Oh, I loved every minute. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, listeners, you know, this is a really specific, special episode of the Corporate Happiness Show. 
And I hope that you kind of feel uplifted and you feel the shift that just happened for you. And keep in mind that it's really, it's limitless. If you're wanting to start living like that and knowing more, contact Danielle or contact me. I also can shoot you towards Danielle. And it's just, it's possible. So thanks for listening and have a wonderful, wonderful new time.